Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon Tony. Tom Brady's agent says the quarterback is a victim of a sting operation. I'm Tony Kornheiser. No, a sting operation is what happened to me at that Poughkeepsie brothel in 1978. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to advertise. I, I know it's been like 30 years, but you know... It was right by the highway. I thought I, I was lost. I was going in for a map. I had yeah. no sure idea were. what was going in. A map of what? You know, boy. I just thought I could get a road map. I could get yeah. back on the highway. Sure. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Cowboys sign Lyle Collins, the Bulls lay an egg, and John Wall has five broken bones in his wrist. But we begin today with Tom Brady's agent, Don Yee, blasting the Ted Wells report. Yee called the report, quote, a significant and terrible disappointment, unquote. Yee said it was, quote, a sad day for the league, unquote. Intriguingly, Yee offered the theory that the NFL, in conjunction with the Colts, who had tipped off the league of their suspicion of deflated footballs, perpetrated a sting on the Patriots. Wilbon, does Yee persuade you that Tom Brady was railroaded? No, particularly not with the sting operation. That becomes like a what? What, what, what are you talking about? The sting operation. Let me just dismiss, from my standpoint, the notion of a sting operation. What Yee does he, is he, he basically goes after the league to protect his client. It's his job, but I thought he was very persuasive in doing it. Mm -hmm. Tony, he gives me pause. I mean, basically, he steps out there and says, you don't have anything conclusive, and yet, this is what you deliver. You spend all this time, you don't have any of the goods, and now you want my man to be punished, too? Yeah. He does a persuasive job in backing people off. I'm going to go to the sting operation for a second, because I have nothing against sting operations, okay? That's, that's how bad guys are put in jail. They did. Yeah, that's how bad guys are put in jail. The okay, government don't believe does this all the time. Well, if it were true... If it were true, and apparently there is a disclaimer to this in the in the Federal Reserve. Yes. Okay, but if it were true, what would be so odd about it is that you would think that the Colts and the Patriots, two member clubs of the same organization, that the NFL itself would not be part of that. Right. Because it wouldn't be one, one against the other. I want to go back to something that, that I tried to say yesterday about this whole thing. Because you know that I think that Tom Brady will get punished. And I don't think in a real live court he would get punished. Of not. And I don't think this is all that significant. And I don't think Matt Ryan, for example, is going to get suspended. But we talked about the optics of it. And we talked about the notion that it's Brady's turn in the box. So if, if this isn't too subtle, I think it is unjust that he's going to get suspended. And I think he will. But not unfair. Not unfair. Yeah, I, I keep coming back to something. You know, yesterday I said, I, I first started saying three or four games and I could be talking to two. Yeah. Here's the You're problem. not going up. Burden of proof, I'm going the other way. How about yeah. this? How about this? Low. How about if they say you can't be in the building from the first day of training camp, let's say July 15th, just to pick a date, until Labor Day. <laughs> You're out. For those six weeks, you can't be I, in I the think, building, think, on the practice field, Mike, in the meeting rooms, but we're not going to suspend you for a game. Mike, how I about think, that? I think other players will, will go, go crazy. wild. They'll say, look at all of us who have been suspended. And I'd suspended. say we're suspended them for six weeks. It's not the not same thing work. if you're able to play in the first game. I mean, I, Burden Look, of proof. Who knows? Burden of proof. Yeah, it's not. It's it, it's not it? quite there. No. But when people scream that there's separate forms of justice for separate kinds of people, I agree with that. it's hard to argue against that. Too. It's a tough one. One team that has no problem taking football players with issues is the Dallas Cowboys. A week after drafting a rookie who failed a drug test at the combine. And six weeks after signing a player convicted last fall of domestic violence, the Cowboys today signed another rookie, Lyle Collins, who went undrafted because he's been questioned by police in connection with the murder of his ex-girlfriend. Tony, given the lip service paid by NFL teams to value in character, what in the world are the Cowboys doing? Is it the old line from Motel 6 that we'll keep a light on for you, that we'll just let everybody come late at night? Um... Maybe Jerry Jones wants to cast himself as Father Flanagan, and, th and this is boy time. time to do that. It, what is interesting to me it, it, is this. We already know that, that Hardy is suspended for a bunch of games. Right. It's possible that Gregory might be suspended and might not get on the field. Lyle Collins, if he is accused and charged... And he has not been. He is he's, said to now so be he's going to be not suspended. A suspect. So what the Cowboys, it seems to me, are doing is saying, well, we'll take the optimistic viewpoint... That, in fact, people will either serve their suspensions or won't be suspended, and we will welcome them as football players. And if, in fact, people are not charged, of course you do that. The easiest place in America to welcome in a football player who has trouble swirling about him is Texas. And the easiest place in Texas is Dallas. 
because football is valued there yeah. at a level which arguably is not valued anywhere else in America. But you wouldn't argue that people aren't innocent until proven guilty. No, 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 no I wouldn't argue. I'm just right. saying that, the, look, this is very much about perception and public relations. Yeah. And just like you said, what's the first landing spot you had for Adrian Peterson? Dallas, Texas. Okay. Dallas, Cowboys. There's a reason for that. Yeah. It, well, it, I, it, it, it's just, look, Tony, they value football so much, they are more likely than some other places if to it turn was one a blind person, eye and deaf ear. If it was one person, you might make an excuse. It is the cluster factor. It, it is. is three where you go, whoa, what are they doing? Because, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't take Hardy, but I might take the others. You know, sometimes I wonder about this. Jason Garrett, kid who went to Columbia and Princeton, and here's Jerry buying up all the bad notes in America and dumping them right on his desk. I wonder what it's like to be him every once in a while. The Washington Wizards today announced that John Wall's left hand and wrist have five, oh. count them, oh. non-displaced fractures. Wall is out seeking medical opinions as to his best course of action, and it's unclear whether he can play. What about Will, Wall's a ball handle? You'd think he'd need two hands for that. What would Wall's absence mean for the Wizards? Doom. I mean, not just his absence. If he can't play effectively, and it's hard to imagine how he can, they're not going to beat Atlanta. They're just not. I mean, they're the opposite number on that team. Jeff Teague is a pretty damn good ball player. John Wall has been so effective in the playoffs, Tony. I mean, the, the, the number of baskets produced by his assists are greater than any other player in the playoffs right now. He has created 31 points a game by his assists alone. Okay, That's so number one. John Wall's having a fabulous playoff. Yes. I, I hate to see this because the injuries are defining again the NBA playoffs. I don't see any way for them to get past Atlanta without yeah. John Wall. Remember when I used to write in the Post and I talked about the curse of Le Boulay? Yeah. Uh, because people go there and get hurt and terrible things happen. They were, if not outplaying Atlanta, they were at least even with them, and I think they were outplaying. Outplaying the game one. And they certainly outplayed Toronto, and, and so I think that they get very unlucky in this. I, you know, I, I fell some years back and put my hand out to brace myself and had similar stuff to what he had without the brakes. My hand's swollen like a melon. It took weeks. Like his. He said the other night, I could go out there, but I'd have a 100 turnovers. And so, so he didn't, which is, I thought, a move is really a crossover. Smart. You can't cross over with one hand. It can't That's be done. That's a move. It can't be done. <laughs> Not even Steph Curry and Magic can cross you with one hand. No, this is a, this is a bad break, yep. if you will, for the Wizards. They don't have because I thought they could beat Atlanta. They're set up. That he looks. A lot he's of teams now have gone to a second ball handler. The Wizards no, have not. He's, John Wall is that player. Bradley, Bradley Beal plays shooter. off of John Wall, as we both know. Everybody plays and off John Otto Wall. Porter and yeah, Paul no, Pierce no, and the big no, minutes. All he's no, the best player, you, the most you, important player on the floor. You take the engine out of the car. You think he'll start? To, you think he'll play? play? I think he'll try to play. I think he'll be out there. I think he'll try tough to play. Kid. I think he is. He is. He is tough. People are talking about hockey players being tough, but you know what, Tony? Sometimes you have to, you. I thought it was great when he didn't go out there for his team the yeah. other night. They're going to need him. They're going to need to see him in uniform. I missed on LeBron scoring 35 last night. He had 33, so pardon me. But that was more than enough to blast the Bulls in the submission and pull the Cavaliers even. LeBron went retro last night, put his headband back on, and it might as well have been a cape the way the Bulls cowered. Derrick Rose made only 6 of 20 shots. The Bulls demonstrated again, zero resolve, and all the folks predicting a Bulls series win are suddenly quiet. Tony, is the rest of this series more likely to play out like game one or game two? Unbelievable humble brag by you because you were off by two points and you wanted to pat yourself Close. on the back. It's more likely to go to game two, and I'll give you a statistic that all Bulls fans know and have to be terrified of. This is the third time that a Bulls team has beaten the LeBron James team in game one. The other two times this happened, sweep, sweep. That's Get right. out of here, Chicago That's Bulls. Right. And now we've started on the road to that sweep. The way LeBron took over that game, and he did not have a great game. He shot, I think, 13 for 29, but he commanded it. He was powerful. He owned the game. He did. He and, that, his opponent. and that's what I think he can. And that doesn't mean four in a row. No. But when they need it, he can do it. Tony. The, none of the rest of the series is going to play out like game one or game two. Now, you're going to settle into something. I'm not going to say you it's pushing. Did you push? Flipper. Did you push Listen game to one game two? I told you what was going to happen yesterday. I told you the winner of last night's game was going to win the series. That's not pushing. Okay. So then you okay. say Chicago. I'm, I'm saying losing. Cleveland's going to win the series because the Bulls don't seem to understand going into yesterday. They're going to have to win twice in Cleveland because LeBron ain't going to get swept in Chicago. He's not going 0 for 3 in Chicago. He never does. You just mentioned that. So the Bulls came out in some sort of mail it in. Oh, we 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 got nice ours already. Stuff. They did. 
And that's disappointing, like Tony, the because they have, I, I've been telling you all year, the thing about the Bulls is not the talent level. It's what they don't have, which is the fire. LeBron does have that. He put the headband on as something that was symbolic. Boys, we are going back to a time where you're going to follow me and do this my way. We're not going to be democratic about this. And he crushed them. I last know you night. don't like. And the it's statistic. not going to play out the rest of the way. I know the you don't like that. the statistic, but on one day's rest, here was Derrick Rose shooting six for twenty and getting fourteen points. What about this? Like I don't care on about this. Two that. days rest, he scores twenty-four points a game. On one day's rest in the playoffs, twenty-nine point eight. Be lazy. Shooting. Follow the advanced analytics, or you can follow common sense. There are adjustments made, as you know, in the playoffs. You know what I'm game following? by game. You know what I'm, this is not. A Advanced analytics. This is counting. It's arithmetic. But why? It's the why. We know he's off. Why? He can't play well without two days rest. No, because the other team is adjusting to him in the very next game. Well, they're going to do it again because it's no okay. day rest, kids. Right. He's got to adjust to The Cleveland Cavaliers tried to be funny last night on an in house video. They did a spoof of dirty dancing in which a man in a cab shirt catches a woman presumably his girlfriend, as she leaps into his arms, just like in a movie. Then he throws her down because she's wearing a Bulls t-shirt, and at the end, the bit is resolved when the woman, now wearing a Cavs t-shirt, and hello, an ice pack on her head, says, quote, I'm all in now, unquote. Well, when the Cavs have apologized, they have pulled the video. Your thoughts? How stupid are people? Apparently largely stupid. H how stupid are layers of people? Apparently, largely stupid. We, we live in a, a world now, and it, you, 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 you can't even say, oh, you must have been living in a cave. Because in a cave, there's some light that gets in. You have to know, in the climate we live in now, awareness of domestic violence is yeah. heightened. Yeah. What could you be thinking? And even if you were stupid enough to do this, what about the layers of people above you who, in any smart organization, who in any organization as thorough as a, a member club in the NBA, and I would say this no matter who the team is, Tony, the, the, the Houston Rockets, didn't they just have this last week and fire somebody, something that wasn't even this Neanderthal? No, it wasn't. You can't have this. Yeah, you cannot send a message that this is the way we convert Bulls fans to become Cavs fans. You can't have that. But it's interesting. It's not just them. There's, there's this controversy about Bud Light. That's Budweiser. Right. This is Budweiser. This is a pretty big organization. And they were writing on their beer bottles of Bud Light, the perfect beer for removing no from your vocabulary for the night, which just makes it easy to go to date rape at yeah, that it point. Does. And they did that. So How many so, layers of eyes do you think at a company that big? Should have been more. It should have, let me say this. It should have been one more. And you mean to tell me both cases. one person, male or female, doesn't have the sensitivity <laughs> to say, no, 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 we're not having that. Wake let's, up. Let's take a break. Coming up, we will ask Bill Poley and how important the flake gate really is to other NFL teams. And would this even be a big deal to any of them if it involved a lower profile team of quarterback? You know, before you basically made John Wall into Willis Reed, and I can't live with that. Willis Reed? Oh, yeah, you said he'll be out there. His team needs him. He he'll play through. He will. Geico presents Strange Saving Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. <laughs> Let's get back into what the league needs to do about Tom Brady and Deflategate with former president of the Colts and member of the NFL's competition committee, our friend Bill Poley. And let's start with this. If you were Tom Brady's general manager, what would you advise him right now? Well, I think he, he probably needs to um, sit down with the people from the league office and uh, discuss what, uh, what went on, what he knows, what he doesn't know. Um, perhaps... Um, uh, he may want to revise some things that uh, have been said or explain some things that have been uh, uh, said by Mr. Wells. But Mr. Wells' uh, report is, is going to be the document by which the league uh, determines what uh, they'll do going forward with respect to punishment, et cetera. So, um, uh, you know, if there are some things in there that Tom disagrees with, I'm sure he can he, he can deal with it now or he can deal with it on appeal. How serious an issue is all of this for other teams in the league? Well, I think it's very serious because it's a competitive issue. Any time you get close to or within the white lines, it's generally believed that these issues 
affect the integrity of the game and therefore are very serious. And, uh, and I think that's the way most teams view it. And the commissioner has stated uh, all the way back to 2008 that that's the way he sees it. So, um, you know, I think it's fair to say that everybody views it as a serious allegation. Bill, one of the things there seems to be such a great difference of opinion on is how much of an advantage a deflated football might provide. I mean, you've been around a lot of quarterbacks in your time in the league. What, what do you, is there a consensus? I mean, where do you come down on this issue of whether we're talking about a misdemeanor here or something much larger than that? Well, I can tell you from my own experience in, uh, as a young coach that it, it does make a difference. An, an older coach advised me to um, take a little air out of the ball, and it, it makes a difference. There's no question about that, but that's not the issue. Uh, the issue is was there a competitive violation that unbalanced the playing field. And by definition, as Mr. Wells pointed out, that is true because the Patriots were using balls that were not in legal compliance with the standard of the leagues and the rule, and the Colts were not. That's by its very nature an unbalanced playing field, and a level playing field is the critical issue with respect to integrity of the game. Uh, it's the competition committee's responsibility to promulgate rules that that uh, promote a level playing field, and it's the league offices, uh, some might argue, first responsibility to make sure that there is a level playing field for all 32 franchises. That was violated in this case, and therefore it's a very serious allegation regardless of the outcome of the game. Uh, let's get to one of the questions that everybody on TV has to answer. You pretend you're in charge. What's the appropriate punishment for Brady and the Patriots? Well, I don't know the answer to that, but I will tell you what I think they'll be uh, guided by. On the one hand, when we've had competitive violations, and this goes back to 2008 when Commissioner Goodell revised the policy, he said that he was inclined to take draft choices for competitive violations. On the other hand, we have had very recently... Uh, most recently in the Cleveland and Atlanta cases, suspensions uh, in addition to draft choices and suspensions in the Atlanta case for an individual, Rich McKay, who had no responsibility uh, for or involvement in the violation, but it happened on his watch, and therefore he was suspended. So we've got those two issues. The third part of this is that Mr. Wells makes clear that um, both Tom and the Patriots' attorneys in terms of producing Mr. McNally for a second interview were less than completely compliant with the investigation. Um, the commissioner has stated on many occasions that that's an issue in terms of determining what the punishment may be. So those are what they're wrestling with right now in terms of trying to come up with the right punishment. Draft choices, uh, aggravating circumstance with respect to incomplete compliance, and whether or not there ought to be suspensions involved. Bill, we'll let you go after this. I if this was a low-profile team, a sort of anonymous team, if you will, I probably shouldn't use that word, but low-profile, say like the Jaguars, would this be as big a deal either to the league or the general public as it is being the Patriots? It would not be to the general public. Uh, I, I firmly believe it would be to the league. Bill, as always, thank you thank so you very, very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, fellas. Let's take one last break, but still to come, Everett Golson is leaving Notre Dame for another school. Where do you think he's going to end up? And, what do you think of We don't have a team. Canadians Sweet. lost to the Lightning in brutal fashion last night. Get it back to back, Tony. They're going to get swept? One would think at this point. Wow. ESPN Radio. With the action on the court, the diamond, or the gridiron. <laughs> Comes alive. The NBA. The San Antonio Spurs are the world champions. Major League Baseball. San Francisco Giants are the champions of the baseball world. A new college football playoff. College football playoff national champions. The Ohio State Buckeyes. You're home for the best in sports play-by-play. -play. ESPN Radio. At the time, people had the 85th birthday. Vito Babe Perilli. He was an original member of the AFL starting with Oakland in 1960. He was traded to the then Boston Patriots the next year. Spent seven years with the Pats, including his All-Pro in 1964 season. 
when he threw for almost 3,500 yards and 31 touchdowns. And not once was he accused of deflating the football. Well, some famous people in his life played college football for Bear Bryant in Kentucky. He was Joe Namath's backup with the Jets that Super Bowl. So he got a ring. That? Absolutely. Happy anniversary, Justin Verlander. On this day four years ago, you tossed your second career no-hitter. Verlander has yet to make a start this season due to his strained right triceps. But this morning, with permission from the doctors, he made 50 throws and reported no ill effects to his arm. You know also this is the anniversary of Michael Jordan's shot over Elon. And Reggie Miller's shot over Spike Lee, the Knicks, you and all of New York. Happy trails to the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens were headed to overtime last night in Tampa, and perhaps an overtime win that would get them back in the series. But with exactly one second to go, even less time than when Washington's Joel Ward beat the Rangers, Tyler Johnson scored for Tampa Bay. Montreal now down 3-0 in games 0-8 versus the Lightning this season. So how you doing? I mean, they're not doing well, and I had the Canadians get into the finals out of the Eastern Conference. That's not looking too good either. No errors today. This is routine for me and very surprising for Wilbon. Big finish. Let's do it. Yahoo reports Kevin Love not returning Kelly Olenek's calls. Should he? Come on, he's reaching out time after time. At some point... Quarterback Everett Golson transferring from Notre Dame, immediately eligible. Your thoughts? Florida State, I believe, has a vacancy right now. Pope Francis was named an honorary member of the Harlem Globetrotters after their visit to Vatican City. Do you think he can help the city? He couldn't even spin the ball. He couldn't even, he couldn't, he couldn't no. hold his spin. They put it on his finger spinning already. Blackhawks will sweep Minnesota tonight up there. Will they do it? Oh, big Blackhawks fan. Taves, Kane. Oh, good, good, good. crush. Absolutely. Last one, no NBA games tonight. What is the deal with that? It's a travel night for me. Why don't you, you rip your bosses? This is a TV decision. Yeah. You want to rip your bosses? If living, breathing NBA commissioner, <laughs> we'd have a game. A lot of time trying to better the next time. I'm Tony oh, Kornheiser. That's the easy way out. What a bum. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow on Knuckleheads. Check out the PTI podcast on iTunes. Tommy Giacomo. I'll see you in a half hour. No free food for him. Head to St. Louis to face the Cardinals. The pregame at 7 Eastern, first pitch at 8, Sunday on ESPN and ESPN Radio.